I get lots of questions from readers about penetration testing or simply pen testing. The main questions are where to start and what tools should I use? Well, I break it down into three main categories of tools, hardware-based pen test tools, application-based tools, and programming tools. And using these tools is a great place to start learning about pen testing. Start by testing your own network and computers. Of course, make sure that these are just test computers and don't use any systems that have important data on them. It's also recommended that you do this on a closed network that no one else has access to. First is hardware-based tools. These usually require access to the building. An organization may or may not allow this, so I'll make this portion brief. Some of the tools you might want to add to your arsenal include a Dropbox, such as the Pwn plug as shown here. These are easily plugged right into the network. They're fully programmable and customizable and expensive and are really small. They come with lots of built-in tools in a small form factor, so it's a really nice device. Pony Express and other companies also have uh, penetration testing smartphones. And again, you can see super expensive, but uh, these are really nice tools to use as well, and they fit right in your pocket, and you can test the network wirelessly. And also, you can find some plug-in pen testing adapters for some phones from other companies. They can add on to other phones and add on the software that you need. But back to the Dropbox, as shown here, uh, this is a serious security tool, and it's a must for the security tester. However, the cost is formidable, so there are other options. For example, you could go with a programmable wireless access point. And one of my favorites historically has been this Linksys WRT54G. I'd use the open WRT firmware to make this guy function as a pen testing tool and run a variety of tests, including the use of Nmap and other tools. The best wireless access point will be one that is programmable, has a powerful CPU, and is small and can fit in your pocket without being noticed. If you don't have access to the building, you could try using this and setting it up as an evil twin just outside the perimeter of the building. Anyways, what I'm more interested in for this video is software-based tools. And here are some that you have to have in your toolkit. First of all, Nmap. This is an excellent security scanner. Some people know it as just a port scanner, but it goes well beyond that. I love this tool. I definitely recommend it, and you should use it in the command line in Windows and in Linux systems. And it's highly customizable, and I recommend that you not only get the tool, but buy the book by the creator, Gordon Lyon, Nmap Network Scanning. Definitely go for those. The next tool is Metasploit. The world's most used penetration testing software. Yes, um, heavily used by pen testers. In fact, some pen testers use this exclusively. So you're going to want to download this and check it out. The net, and by the way, you're going to want to learn more about it. A couple of good books, uh, Metasploit, The Penetration Tester's Guide, and also Mastering Metasploit. I like both of those. The next tool is Nessus, the Nessus Vulnerability Scanner by Tenable. This is something that works in a client-server fashion, and it's more of a vulnerability scanner, probably not as much penetration testing, but I recommend that you have this in your toolkit anyways. It's kind of along the lines of Nmap and Metasploit, but it's more passive, whereas your Metasploit will be an active pen test tool. And the pen test really should be as active as possible, so you can really simulate the uh, attacker. Now, another tool, moving into different types of tools here, we have Wireshark. And Wireshark is a packet analyzer. You might also hear it referred to as a network sniffer or packet sniffer. Uh, this protocol analyzer or packet analyzer is an excellent tool to use to see exactly what data is flowing through the network. And I've uncovered all kinds of stuff with Wireshark. I've seen all kinds of things running on servers because you could drill down into the packets. 
So you definitely want to use Wireshark. This is at the top of the list with Nmap and Metasploit. And Microsoft has the network monitor, which is kind of the same type of thing. And there's a server-based version of that. And the newer uh, version of that is uh, Microsoft Message Analyzer. So you may be interested in those as well. But definitely download Wireshark. You're going to want to use that. And that used to be known as Ethereal, by the way. Then we have Kismet, which is for scanning wireless 802.11 networks. Download that program. And speaking of wireless networks, Aircrack-NG. You want to use Aircrack-NG to be able to crack or attempt to crack uh, pre-shared keys on wireless networks. And then you have a host of password cracking tools. For example, John the Ripper and um, also Kane and Abel. And you're going to want to download Rainbow Tables. There's a variety of these that you're going to want to work with. And it depends on whether you're booting a system or trying to hack a system that's already running. So that's going to, it's going to depend on the scenario. And also a variety of Linux live CDs, though you probably won't be able to use these in many scenarios when you're doing your pen tests, but you should have Nopix or an equivalent of Nopix. You should have Hiren's boot CD. And I would definitely recommend getting the network security toolkit. So a variety of Linux live CDs in addition to all these tools. And this is not a finite list. And newer and better tools are always being developed. But it's a good list of tools to get you started. Some pen testers out there use Nmap and Metasploit only. And with no configuration. But I feel this is weak. It's a disservice to your customers. You need to really know the program. Be able to customize it. And even program it. Speaking of which, you should be competent in a variety of programming tools. Now, it's tough to define exactly what coding languages you should get into, and that's due to the broad nature of systems that can be attacked and defended. But if I was to lean in one direction for the pen tester, I would lean towards scripting languages. For example, Ruby, a programmer's best friend. This is an excellent tool to use. As it says here, it's a dynamic open source programming languages based on simplicity. And because of that, you'll find a lot of people use it and a lot of programs work with it. For example, Metasploit. Uh, you can construct modules with Ruby to work with Metasploit. And that's one of the things I like about the Mastering Metasploit book. It actually gets into that a little bit. So Ruby is... One example, and the Ruby derivatives, like Ruby on Rails and that sort of thing. Another one is PHP. I work with PHP a good deal also, and I would definitely place that one towards the top due to the fact that web servers are a huge target, and many, many websites are built in PHP. You know, to do proper input validation, you want to make sure your PHP is coded properly, and some pen tests will uncover bad PHP. And plus, you have all this other stuff that's developed in PHP that could take control of a server. For example, web shells and stuff like that. So you really want to get into PHP as a security person. So Ruby and PHP are two that I would focus on a lot. But also, you should know the basics of Python, Perl, and JavaScript, and perhaps even ASP. A working knowledge of a scripting language is necessary to build those scripts. You'll have to decide which language is best for you, but once you do, I would then practice scripting until it becomes second nature. Some pen testers get away with just using third-party tools all the time and never customizing them and never scripting within them, but it can be very limiting. I would say that you should want to be able to automate processes and the best way is to use those third-party tools along with some scripting modules that are either available or that, build, that you build yourself. But you also must keep in mind that hackers will use a variety of high-level languages as well, such as C, C++, C Sharp, Java, VB, and so on. And they use these when they develop their attacks. To be able to break down an attack, you would need to know these languages. And perhaps it goes a bit beyond pen penetration testing, and it's more security in general. 
but you never know. You never know what might happen. I would at least know the basics of these high-level languages. And on a side note, know your command line like the back of your hand, whether it's the terminal in Linux-based systems or the command prompt in Windows. Know them all. And get busy with the Windows PowerShell as well. You want to know all these command lines. You really want to be able to work with them. And, you know, when you're dealing with programs like Nmap, you're going to be controlling them from the command line as well. So another reason to really be able to be fluent in the command line. Now, to prove your knowledge of penetration testing and security testing in general, you might opt for some certifications or even a degree in information security. Consider certs such as the Security Plus by CompTIA to start. That gives you a good groundwork, good foundation for security in general. Then perhaps the CEH, the Certified Ethical Hacker by the EC Council. This is more of an elite certification and there's more of an in-depth application and testing process for this. And then possibly specialized certs from, say, Cisco, like the Cisco Cybersecurity Specialist, also known as S-Cyber. Or perhaps certifications from vendors such as Checkpoint and other high-level manufacturers of firewall equipment. So in closing, make sure you know how to use and customize tools such as Nmap. I love that tool. It has worked wonders for me. And I really like all these tools that we've talked about so far. Properly used tools such as these will uncover the weaknesses to an organization's security infrastructure, allowing you to provide that organization with a valuable service. So that's it for this video. Uh, check out my website, www.davidlprouse.com, and talk to me.